So let's look on the right side of your page. You're going to see that we have some numbers. So we're going to actually just put some things about these numbers. Okay? So number one, all right, on the right side, number one is also a lot of times referred to the number of unity, right? Number of unity. So when we, when we are unified, we usually like to use a term that we are one. So you can just put unity, okay? For number two, the number two is the number of agreement or witness, okay? So number two is the number of agreement and witness. I know it's, it starts off slow, but I'm telling you, you guys are going to be jumping at the end of this. Okay? That's number two, okay? Number three. Number three is the number of manifestation, all right? Three is number of manifestation. Jesus died and rose on the third day. third day, number of manifestation. Jonah was in the whale, or the fish, he was in the belly of the fish for how many days? Three, Three days. days, manifestation, and he came out, okay? So number four, four is actually the number of the universe, all right? So there's a universal principle. Four is the number of the universe, okay? So you can put universe, you can put earth. Now, for example, the axes on the earth, you have north, West, south, east. Four of them, right? How many seasons do we have? Four. Four seasons, right? Numbers of the universe, okay? Number five. Number five, and these numbers are very important, okay? Number five, we have the number of grace. Thank you, yes. The number of grace. Grace is powerful. The first group of God's holy word was what's called the Torah. And the Torah was the first five books of, of the Bible, which are of, of Moses, all right? So that's grace. The word of God is grace. And when Jesus fulfills it, he fulfills grace, okay? So that's number five is grace. Number six is the number of man, okay? Number six is number of man. Okay, so you could just put man, because why? Man was created on the sixth day, okay? Sorry? Seven, seven is a great number. It, before it's even completion, it's perfect. So put perfection, and, and, and also, obviously, we know that God, God completed on the seventh day, so it has some completion, uh, completed nature, but we're gonna put perfection, okay? Number seven is perfection. Then you're gonna see another number. You're gonna see number eight. Now, how many days do we have in a week? Seven. seven. What happens after day seven? starts again, right? So eight is referred to as the number of new beginnings, okay? So put number eight as new beginnings. Okay? And the number you have after that is, you have number 10, right? Huh? What do you have on your sheet? Yeah, I'm skipping some. <laughs> okay, so we have number 10. Now 10 is, is, is a powerful, there's a lot of different things that number 10 is and so forth, but one of the best things about number 10, it, it's also a complete number. It is a complete number. Now there's, there's order in it, there is divine order in it, but I'm gonna focus on the completeness of the number 10. It's like 10 is just saying it's, it's done, it's finished. And God gives commandments, he gave, he gave how many commandments? 10. It was done. That's it. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. It's done. 10. Right? Okay, so we have that. The number after that. We have 12. Now 12 has, 12 is the number of government. Okay? 12 is the number of government. And I like uh, government, obviously, properly run. They enforce certain things, but they, without government, you know, they pass laws, you know, things would be chaotic. So 12 is the number of government, and also I like to say that does have an aspect of order in there. When you have government, you can have order. You have a, a nation without government, a lawless nation, then you can have chaos, so there's no order. Okay, so it could be government and also or, uh, order, okay? Why is the number perfect? Why is number seven perfect? You can't answer it for me. No? Okay, let's, let's do this. Let's read Revelations 4, verse 7. Now we know Revelations 4, verse 5. Now we know that God 
actually rests on the seventh day, right? And that's why it's also perfect. But let's read what Revelation 4, verse 5 says. Revelation 4, verse 5 says this. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Oh, man, that's so good. That's why it is perfect, because that represents the Holy Spirit. That's why it's also perfect. And that's why God says, when he says you worship him, you worship him in spirit, and you worship him in truth. Okay? Revelation 4, verse 1 to 3. After this, and now this is John speaking, okay? Not John Baptist, says so, you know. All right? After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a tr of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. That's why I say there's unity there. All right? And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, and in the sight like it unto an By the way, for those of you that know about a rainbow, how many colors is a rainbow? Seven. Seven. All right? No coincidence that God would actually use that when he says, I'm not going to actually wipe men out with the flood anymore. He used that as the rainbow in the sky to say to Noah, okay, this is a new day, we're not going to do that. Because he cast an image. He cast an image, right? And that's right about the throne. So that's going to be key to what we're talking about here. All right. So now when we get to those numbers, now let's read Revelation 4. Verse uh, 4 to 11, and it says this. And around above the throne were four and twenty seats. Now that's not, that's not four times twenty. That is four and twenty, so it's twenty-four, okay? Which we know. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God, like I said. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes, before and behind. Okay, so there was four beasts, and there was also 24 elders. Now, those of you that are good at math, what is four plus 24? Okay, so that number is, I'm not going to designate something to that number other than that's a number of, it's going to show us what we should be doing. What do they do? They're worshiping day and night. How do I get that? Let me just read a little bit more. Verse 8, and the four beasts had each of them six wings above them, and they were full of eyes, with uh, eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, and is, and is to come. All right? And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who lived forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Like I said, everything was created for God's pleasure. And everything was created by Him. So when we hear that 28, I know that that's an image in heaven that we are supposed to be modeling down here. That's why, yeah, when Jesus said, when you pray, our Father turned in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. That's earth as it is in heaven. It's agreement. It's witness. It's the number two. Earth has to agree with heaven. It's the number two. Okay, so that's how all of that, us, that all goes and comes into play. Okay, so that's basically, like I said, what we should be doing. Remake, witness, universe, grace. Oh, another thing about grace, how many fingers do we have? One, two, three, four, five, right? On each hand, five toes, you know, and so forth. And uh, five books of Moses, man, new beginnings, which we said. And now, so now, now that I do that, we can learn just very quickly. I'm gonna take about five minutes, just give a quick intro. To the, to, the, to the piano, which you're going to do at the left. For those of you that don't understand it, like I said, I'm going to go in five minutes, and but in the session on Saturday, I'll be going in more detail. Okay? So, basically, you're going to fill this out. 
Well, very, 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 very pretty. Okay? So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of white things. Now on your piano on the left side, all right, you can see there's white things and there's black things. Those are called keys or notes. Okay, so write that in very quickly. Those are keys or notes, all right? So now you also have groups of black keys, you have groups of two black keys, and you have groups of three black keys. Okay? Do you see them on your in your little pamphlet? I know you can't see the panel here, yes? No? Okay, good. Alright, so you have two and three black keys. So you're gonna touch all the two black keys, you see that. If you have to touch all the three black keys, you'd be able to do that. You can touch it on a piece of paper too. Okay? After you do that, when you go up in music, you go towards the right. Everybody point to the right. Point to the right. Whenever you go that way, you go up in music. So when you want to go down, which way would you go? Yeah. Exactly, to the left, okay? All right, so put that in there. All right, the next thing you need to understand, the next thing that you need to know, is uh, the musical alphabet, okay? Just like the regular alphabet that we use, it's a lot easier. Instead of A to Z, we have, for those of you that know piano, we go from A to G. G. All right, we got a lot of piano, but it's good. But it's good, like I said, we got four minutes left, all right? So A to G. So if, if it's A from A to G, what is the alphabet? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. How many letters are those? Seven. Any coincidence? <laughs> right? No coincidence. No, no. No coincidence. All right? So th there are seven, okay? So we actually have that. So A to G, so write that in the music alphabet, okay? The next thing we want to do is we want to find where C is, okay? All right, but before I do that, if we want to go higher, which direction do we go? Right. When we go down, which way? Yeah. Okay, so we have the letters uh, A on the piano. So we know we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, if we want to go higher, go to the right. One letter higher than A would be? Yeah, one letter higher than D. One letter higher than F. G. And one letter higher than G. A. Y. Exactly, just like the seven days in a week, it starts all over again, right? Make sense? Okay, so if you want one letter lower than F, where would you go? E. E, good. One letter lower than A. G. Why? Starts all over that way, right? Right, that's how it goes, okay? So that's how the music alphabet works. So then you have to find where C is. Now, C is such a beautiful key because a lot of things that we do, a lot, a lot of musicians will tell you on the piano, C could be one of the easiest keys to play. And that's going to be the basis of what I actually do all my demonstration on today because it's the easiest instrument, the piano is the easiest instrument where you can see things so clear. Before when you had just the harp, just the guitar, you couldn't see white and black. So you have some of these theories that would seem to work, but it didn't really, it, there was a disconnect somewhere. With the piano, it's in living color, well, two colors, white, white, and black. So I don't know, do they consider black a color? It's a shade. It's a shade. Okay. Exactly. So, so one color and one shade. Okay, there you go. I can get it, right? Shadow, shade, right? There you go. That is amazing. I think I've learned something. Thanks for teaching me that. Okay? So we have that. So we got to find our C. A C. Now, C is very easy to find. It's C is the white key to the left of the two black keys. Okay? So look at that page where, the, where there's two black keys. To the left of that, there is a C. Right? And you can put a C there because that is C. So though that this alphabet is known as the primary names. We know there's seven of them, okay? And they are on the piano, they are all white. That's why they're very easy to find. And it has the same principle. So if you find C, right, and if you want to get to D, where are you going to go one letter higher or one letter lower? Right. One letter higher. So you see how it works. So that's how the alphabet works. And it just goes like that, and then repeats all over again, just like the seven days. Does anybody not understand what I just said? Good, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. All right, so those are, so based on that, you should be able to follow along very quickly with some of those letters that we have. Why is that important? Because it's gonna stem from what we're gonna do. Like, like we said, the regular alphabet has seven letters, but in that alphabet, all right, we can play certain things. So for example, if I were to play this, what is that? Major scale. Now, I'm going to play it again. I want you to count. How many letters do you hear? I'll do it again. Here we go. So start counting from when I first play. That counts as one, okay? I'll try it again. Seven, and I have to end it, right? Eight. What, what does eight represent? New beginnings. New, new beginnings, right? 
new beginning. So that's why the note that I played on the eight was actually the same as the first one. Everybody knows this sound. They may say major scale. They may say do re mi fa sol la si. I say this is the sound that God has given us to identify the revelation. It's deeper than just a major scale. All right. It's deeper than just that. Everybody knows this sound. Why? Because God is programming inside of you to recognize it. So when revelation comes, it something just has to be activated. Okay? So yes, there were some movies where they had Everybody has a bit of note. Now, on the piano, they are all white, so they're easy to find. C, all the way up, seven different notes, right? Now, you may say, okay, Robert, you got seven notes, but what about those black ones that are there? So very quickly, just as you can see the definition there, there's a, something that's called a semitone, all right? Do you see that on your page? Okay, I'm just doing this very quickly. So semitone, all right? A semitone is one key above or below a note. So write that very quickly. You have 10 seconds if you don't know. A semitone is one key above or below a note. Sometimes people can say it's a half, one half step above or below. Okay? All right? So you got that. So a tone now is two keys. Now, remember these keys are these white and black things, okay? But a tone is two keys. A distance of two keys above or below a note or a distance of a two halves which make a whole. Okay? So that would be a tone. Okay? Yes? Yes, okay, so let me move on. So that's a semitone and that's a tone. Very quickly. Okay, I'm just going quickly because uh, there's a lot of people here obviously that do know this. Okay? And the next thing we actually have to know about is something that looks like a number sign. Starts with the well, it's supposed to be number signs. Starts with an S. It's called the musicians out there? Sharp. Sharp, alright? What does a sharp do to a note? It raises it a semitone, okay? It raises it one semitone. What's a semitone? Half step above or below, all right? Specific. So then what does a flat do to a note? Which is a, the next signal? It goes down. Just like if you have a flat tire, something goes down, right? Something is. So it's safety. But how far, how far does it go down? Semitone. It goes down a semitone. Thank you very much, okay? So we have those in basis. Now, why do we do that? Because they're going to help us name the black keys very quickly. All right, so if you put your finger on C on your piano, now if you see you want to go one key higher, your finger's probably going to hit the black key. And when you go higher, which, which one of these things makes it go higher? Sharp. The sharp. So therefore, the first black key of the group of two is called C sharp, right? C sharp, and it has a second name, it's called D flat. D flat, okay? Now the one on the side of it is called D, D, D the black key beside it? D sharp. D sharp, okay? And, all right, what's the other name for it? D e flat. D e flat, okay. The first one in the group of three black keys. F sharp. Right? What's another name for it? G flat. G flat. Uh, the one in the middle? G sharp. G sharp. Another name for it? A flat. A flat. Now, if you're just copying and you don't understand it, don't copy it. Because if you're just talking, you're just, you're not really getting it. All right? But if you understand it, write it down. Okay? So if you don't, we'll do it. You'll we'll be able to do that another time or on the session on um, the So, and the last one here, up here. The last black key. A sharp. A sharp. A sharp. And B flat. Because it has two names. Now, can I ask you a question? How many black keys are there? Now, not all of them are the end, but... Unique black keys. How many? Five. Just five. Five represents grace. grace. Per chance, does God want something to stick out? Per chance, He wants His grace to stick out. I'm telling you, the person that uh, created the piano, which we discovered, his he had a revelation. He had a revelation to create this instrument. As we say, and his name was Bart. I can't remember uh, something like Bartholomew Christofori or something. Like that. Uh, it's an Italian name, but I'm just like, I saw his name, I'm like, oh, 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 that's Christ in it, Christ, the 40, yeah. Not that he's not Christ or anything like that, but like, he got a revelation, I'm telling you, he got a revelation of his piano. 
because this is the easiest way that you can actually understand the revelation of God. All right, so there are only five black keys. No, it's not six, not seven. You understand why I'm saying what I'm saying when we get into some of the incorrect theories that are there. There are only how many black keys? Five. 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 How hard is it to see that there's only five? You can tell that when I get to some other things. Okay, so now we have all those names, and now we can get to some of also some of the, the, the meat of what we want to show you here today. So we actually have all the names, so we have a lot of the foundation. So now let's look at, all right, this. Now, in the book of Revelation, as we read, we read that there were seven lamps, right? And the flames, the candlesticks, and they were before the throne of God, and it represented what? The seven spirits of God. Right? When we actually had did, you know that we had seven notes, but in that major scale when I played it, there were seven different notes and then eight. Right? Why is this powerful? He said he saw seven canvases. He said he saw, saw the seven flames. This is what he saw. That's called, for those of you that don't, don't know, it's called a menorah. It's called a menorah, and you can see that there are seven, seven uh, candlesticks. Origin of Music has eluded musicologists, professors, and scientists for centuries. They've succeeded to come up with theories, but not a comprehensive explanation. In May 2012, Robert Chambers was in Zimbabwe to perform at the Jazz Festival with jazz singer Prudence. He was also to conduct music workshops on playing the piano by ear. While preparing, he prayed a prayer that would forever change his life and the history of music. He prayed, God, I want more of you in the method you gave me. For the next four months, he was downloaded with revelation that reveals undeniable evidence that God created music. The proof? Musical concepts like scales, chords fingering, progressions, and more can all be found in the Holy Bible. Coincidence? You be the judge. To get more info on Robert's paradigm-shattering book, Revelations, The Origin of Music, visit www.theoriginofmusic.com.